<laughs> First lady begged y'all. <laughs> Last time while the song was going for. That's but right. Now I need you to listen. <laughs> and so he says, I will pray the Father. And that's, he's not going to pray the Father until you agree to keep the command. Amen. Yes. Now I'm just talking about two of them. Mm -hmm. And he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. He even got a name. The spirit of what? Spirit. Which means that you claim you got the Holy Ghost and you hate your brother or dislike your brother. That means you're operating in the spirit of life. Uh -huh. That's what that means. You operate in the spirit of a liar. The spirit of a liar cannot come from the Father. Or at least not the Father, the Son, and Son to die for us. So now you have here that Jesus identified what the Spirit name would be. His name would be the Spirit of Truth. Which means that if you operate under the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, then that that you do ought to be truthful. Amen. Your lifestyle ought to be true to your convictions of the scripture. All right now, what you say? It seems to me, at least in this little town that I live in, that folk got a different definition of what the spirit of truth is. Come on. The spirit of truth even got a job. His vocation is, if you read down a little further, his vocation is, is to, is to lead us in all righteousness and truth. Yes, to remind yes. us of the teachings of Christ. That's yes. it. But without the Holy Spirit, the scripture tells us that he, Christ, cannot be with us. Because he's not with us physically. It's through his Holy Ghost that we experience the presence of the Lord. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I know folk is having dreams and stuff, saying they're seeing Jesus. I get that. But I'm not, and I'm not going to say that they are or not. But I do know this. There is no way in the world that you say you've seen Jesus and have not changed. That's all right. right. Well, all right. You hadn't did none of those things. You hadn't seen them in the spirit. You hadn't did none of those things and still are the way that you are. All right. But yet we find saints every day telling us uh -huh. that they had an experience, preacher. Yes, sir. That they had an experience, minister. And yet there's no evidence by change and they lie. None. The same voice that speak in tongues now cussing English. All right, all right, okay. Okay, come on. The same person that blessed the pastor on a consistent basis is now belittling everyone else. The same person that is up here sweeping up the church is going next door. To their class reunion party. You in the house. Oh, yeah. And not just the social out of a friend. Uh -oh. uh -huh. But they go ahead and get their freak on one more time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, that was a little hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sorry about that. I thought I, was, I, thought, I thought I was at home with mother. You in, you in, you in. I thought I was at home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But there's something specific about the spirit of truth you need to know real quick. It says that the world can't receive it. That's what the Bible says. Say that with me. The world cannot receive. The world cannot receive. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Not only can it receive them, but it, it can't, the world can't see the spirit of truth. It don't know the spirit of truth. And so it's mind-boggling to me that for those of us who have tasted and experienced of the things that is to come, that we find ourselves digressing and beginning to behave just like any old common son that we would, and any old kind of sin that we were delivered from when we said, Lord, I serve with all my heart. That's supposed to mean, that's a value to, to serve God with everything you have in you. It's equivalent, if not greater, than the value take when you got married. Right about it. You're supposed to serve God for better and for worse, for rich and for poor. God is still supposed to be the focal point of your existence. Regardless of how tough times get and how hard it becomes, you're still supposed to be motivated to live right. You're still supposed to be motivated to walk with the Lord. You're still supposed to be motivated to serve the Lord until I die. Oh, say you say I'm going to stay on the battlefield of my Lord. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. Yeah. Here Jesus saying, I won't leave you nor forsake you. And of course, when he, when, he, when he makes this statement, most of us just quote that and take it for granted. But if you'd have been reading from chapter, from verse 12 on, you'd have found out that the conditions have to be met before he can choose to stay with you. That's it. 
The scripture never said that he'll always be with a son. The scripture never implied that regardless of what you do, he's going to stay. Matter of fact, the scripture implies just the opposite. As King Saul, when King Saul just, he didn't completely disobey God. He just didn't all the way obey him. And only cost him the kingdom, his anointing, and his sanity. He lost three things through the intricate My God. So if you're going to obey God, it suggests to us that we have to obey him all the way. One of the rules God got is, be not in the world. Be in the world, but be not of it. Right? That means that if you're in the world and of the world, now years ago, uh, in the church that I grew up in, they took that to the extreme. I come, I come up in the time we, we couldn't go behold it. <laughs> you better not grab no dominoes. Woo! <laughs> 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 couldn't do that either. That was equated to the devil's game. And so though we as saved people have come a long way, I think we're itching closer and closer to falling off in the sin due to our liberality. That's it. That's it. That's it. I think we're actually closer and closer to, to where we're going to inadvertently begin to call something that we know is wrong. Right. See, they're saying, they're saying now that it's unmarried, but sleeping with people, they're saying, well, I, I got the love of God for in my heart. Wow. Okay. God ain't never married nobody based on the heart. All right. He only married based on power. Yes, All right. You can have a heart for somebody but not be willing to be committed. All right. See, com see, to make a vow takes a commitment. The Bible says better to never make a vow and to make a vow not and, and not keep it. Yes, I'm going slow, but I'm coming. I heard I heard Pastor, I heard Superintendent when he said he gotta be somewhere at three o'clock. I can take a hand. But what God is saying to people that are believers, he said, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm not going to leave you homeless. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm willing to send a comfort to you, but I need you to be willing to do something for me. Now, it took nothing from you for God to save you but a decision. You had to, when you came to the place, and and, 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 and if you grew up to this little church of God, Christ, like I did, and, and, and they got around you and told you to say thank you, Jesus, real fast, and, and you began to, you began to slob at the mouth and foam, and then they, they call that purging. Y'all remember that? Y'all they mad going back down memory lane. They, they were, Go ahead, I'll preach out. And, and they would get around. The mother would get around. One day, they wouldn't let you have a circle. You remember that? They wouldn't let you have the circle. You have the circle. And you can say God. You can say God. I thank you. That wouldn't be enough. They just say you got a blessing. But they were waiting on that. <laughs> but they were waiting on them thinking Jesus. They were waiting on them thinking Jesus to turn to something else. Eli, Eli, stop out the They went on to turn to something else. When they turned to something else, they were satisfied. But then after that started the learning process, you had to learn how to be saved in the old church. All right, All right preacher. See, that was wrong now. Ain't nobody trying to learn how to be saved. They think that Jesus does do all the saving. But Jesus only saved you from your sins from the cross backwards. Everything from the cross forward, from the time you accept Christ forward, you have you are responsible for that, and you have to deal with that based upon First John one and nine. Go ahead, preacher. Can I teach in this house? Go ahead. Teach, teach, teach. Preacher, preacher. And so you have saints not want, not wanting to take responsibilities for their sin. No, no. I got a brother of mine who's also a preacher, and he, he told me not long ago that he said the Lord knew how I was when He made me. As if it was God's fault that he was in sin. Yeah. <laughs> he knew I had a potty mouth when he made me. Yeah. He knew I loved women when he made me. Help us, God. Most men love women. <laughs> but they don't go around misbehaving. <laughs> Most women love men, but they don't go around misbehaving but because they just. Come but on, to preach up. That to a character flaw of God Come is on. insane. But more and more saints, definitely in the company that we keep, is doing this. Yes, they are. 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 
They're doing this as if it's okay, and then they stir their nose up at us when we try to live according to the scripture. All right, all right. Yes, they do that, preacher. They on Facebook talking about, I got a mission for some of y'all, but not for the super saved. That's people like me. And I always see this one after one of my messages get out there on Facebook land. <laughs> I don't know if they got a message for the Super Saiyan. I ain't know it's such term. I know that's right. I just want to be saved right. Amen. I don't want I don't want to miss heaven on the technicality. I don't want to miss heaven on the assumption of a bad preaching preacher. Y'all miss that. You know, preachers now telling us, I'm going somewhere with this, I gotta move it slow. Preachers are now telling us that once you're in the Lord's hand, that if you accept the Christ, no man can pluck you out of the Father's out of, out of the Father's hand. And that's a true statement. But the Bible never stated about nobody voluntarily leaving. And you have folk voluntarily leaving righteousness for wickedness. And still participating in praise teams, still standing up behind Come on, the come on, come on. Still ushering on doors, you can't get nobody to talk back to them. Still running around waving the banner of Christ, naming yes. the name of Christ like Christ belonged to them, not even knowing that Christ had walked off long ago when, he, when you walked off from them. How do you walk off from the Lord? When you leave the principles of God, by default you walked away from the God of those principles. And so until we get back to obeying the basic principles of God, the God that we serve, Though he'll look at us from on high, he'll have mercy upon us, but we have no rightful right to the promises of God because the promises of God is yea and amen based upon your ability to comply with what the rules he laid out. Come on, come on. And maybe I'm in here by myself, but I believe there's still a few saints left that want to serve God the right way. There's a few people left in this building, in this town. They still want to serve God based upon the Bible. If the Bible said don't do it, we ain't going to do it. If the Bible say do it, we need to do it. There was a time, I feel like preaching now, but there was a time a long time ago that when we came to the law, you would get ushered to class where you would learn right and wrong. And when you were saved, you had to be saved. You couldn't be saved one way on Sunday and saved another way on Monday. Because when the church found out about it, they would haul you up on the carpet. And if you had a position, they would say you need to sit down until you get right. We live in a time to where we are going to find the best talented people. They ain't got to be saved. It don't make a difference now. But as long as you can sing, as long as you can stomp with the law, as long as you can preach and ah, as long as you can do those things, then we got place for you in the house. But the devil is a liar that ain't right up in here. And it ain't right in the Bible, believe in how to say it. And it ain't right nowhere. Because the Bible says that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Can I say it again? If you love me, you will keep his commandments. Herein lies love. This is how the folk know that you got the love of God in your heart. Number one, they're going to see how you love your brother. That fellowship with you in the house. But number two, they're going to see how you treat God when you're outside this house. Don't nobody talk back to me. Preach word, man. I think I will. And so as the word says, because Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross. And so he's telling the disciples, just a little while longer, and you ain't going to see me. He basically was saying that I got to get up out of here. But before I go, I need to know that if you're going to be on my side, tell me whose side are you leaning on? I'm leaning on the Lord's side. In verse 19, he said, a little longer, and the world ain't going to see me no more. 
because I live, you will live also. As long as you live it right, the Lord will live with you. But if you're living wrong, the Lord will vacate you and leave you to your own devices. And it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. And I fear for stuck God. I fear that God is angry with the citizens of stuck God. I fear that God is angry with the citizens of Little Rock because they gotten off the word. Got too caught up. In the euphoria of the praise and worship, got too caught up in the euphoria of giving to the man of God, got too caught up in the euphoria of texting on Facebook and doing what they call a Snapchat and going live. We've gotten too caught up in the euphoria of the preceding the word, but they don't want to pay attention to the proceeding of the word. For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Can I say it again? And for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. Can I say it one more time? And for me and BBHOL, we gonna serve the Lord. Can I say it a fourth time? And for me and New Mountain, we gonna serve the Lord. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Here we go. The Lord first gives them. 